So let's have a look at the rotation A. So I'm going to do two line permutations. So I'm going to put the starting point in the top and then when we affect A onto each of these points I'm going to write the result on the bottom line. So point one with one rotation will end up at point two. Point two with one rotation will end up at point three and then three will end up at point one. So that is our A. Now let's have a look at B. So B with the start points one, two and three. That's a rotation through 240. So point one is going to end up at point three. Point two will end up at point one. And three will end up at two. Okay. Now the identity element, I'm just going to write that over here because it's the trivial one. Basically one, two and three ends up at one, two and three. Basically nothing will change. Okay, that's the rotations taken care of. Now let's have a look at the reflections. So the first one we've got is R. So the points one, two and three. So reflection through this line, one won't change. And then you see two and three will change places. So one, three, two will be our S. Let's have a look at S. So start points again. So the one and the two are going to change places because we're going to re rotate it this way. Sorry, reflect it this way. And the point three is going to stay. So that's going to give us that two line permutation. And then the last one is going to give us a T. So one, two and three. So the point T here, two is going to stay and three are going to change places. Okay, so now we're going to try and find the inverses. So the inverse of each of one of these. So the inverse of A. So basically what we want to do is undo the rotation through 120 degrees. So for point one, where would we start from to undo the 120 degree rotation to get back to one? Well, the answer would be three. So if we err at three, we can go back to one. Same for two, we'd be at point one. And for point three, we'd be at point two. Now that's one way of working the inverse. There is also another way which we can look at which I'll show you is, is if we just flip this set upside down. So if we now go to this one here, we write two, three, one in the top line, and then one, two, three in the bottom line. And all we do then is put them in numerical order in the top line. So then one goes with three, two goes with one, and three goes with two which you can see is exactly what we got here by using the undoing uh, way of looking at it, i.e. the physical way of looking at it. This one here will give us the algebraic way of doing it. Okay, so let's just take that bit off there now. I've just shown that. So the inverse, what uh, group does that equal? So what we want is three, one, two in the bottom. So we can see that B equals the inverse of A. So what we can say is that the composite of A composite B, this gives us our identity element because things will return back to how they was. So now let's do the inverse of B. So if we flip it upside down, one will go to two, two will go to three, and three will go to one. So using the upside down method. So now what we've shown is that the A, sorry, the B acting upon A will give us the identity. So this one is A, so therefore we're saying is that B composite to A is also the identity element. Now what about R? So the inverse of R, 
So again, using this upside down method, one and one will stay as they are, two will go to three, and three will go to two. So which group does that make? That makes R itself. So now what we can say is, so I'm going to write these up here. Uh, let's write this one here. R, obviously R is the identity. So what we say is here that this one here is self inverse. Now what about the S? So the inverse of S, one goes to two, two goes to one, and three goes to three. So this one also equals itself. So again here, S comes to S equals the identity. Okay, now T will also yield the same result because one will go to three, two and two will stay, and three will go to one as it is here. So now we just save ourselves a bit of time and we can see that T goes to T will give us the uh, identity element. Okay, so now let's just make a little bit of space and we can draw up our little Cayley table. So B composite A is also E. So for the Cayley table, we're going to draw all these elements, including the identity, in a format of the table. So we've got E, A, B, R, S, T. And then repeat these down this side. Okay. So the identity acting on the identity is always the identity. What about A composite A? So let's just have a quick look here. A composite A. Basically just going to repeat this one twice. So one goes to two and two goes to three. So then that will give us one three. So now if we're starting at point two, two will go to three. Then act on A again, three will then go to one. So that gives us a one here. And now the point three, three will go to one. And then acting on A again, one then goes to two. So then we end up now with three, one, two, which is B. So A composite A is B. So let's have a look at that. So that's B. We could also, to define this correctly, we could put here the symbol that we're using to multiply everything with. So here the composite symbol. Okay, now we do know here some inverses. So R, S and T are all self-inverse. So we can write E in there. So that's E, E and E in here. A acting on B is also the identity. So A acting on B and B acting on A is also the identity. Okay, now what about B acting on B? So B composite B. It looks like Bob. So what we have is here. Let's act on this one twice. So one will go to three. Three goes to two. Two goes to one. And then one goes to three. And then again, starting at B, three goes to two. 2 goes to 1. So which group is 2, 3, 1? That gives us A. So B times B gives us A. So we can write A at this point here. Okay, now what we can do is these lines on the outside, these are all acted with the identity. So all that does is just repeat what we got in the column headers. So that's A, B, R, S, T. Same here with the rows, A, B, R, S, and T. Okay, let's just put a little line across here. Okay, so we've now separated the rotations and the reflections. Okay, so now let's work on some of these parts of the table. So let's have a look over here. So let's have a look at A 
and composite with R. So we'll write the R first on the top line. So R composite with A. So one, two and three will be our starting points. So we act on A first because it's the laws of composite uh, algebra. So A gives one goes to two, then acting on R, which is this line, two then goes to three. So A first again, start from two, two goes to three, three goes to two, which then is going to leave us with a one on the last one, one of the laws of the group. So three, two, one gives us a T. So therefore we could say R A gives us a T. Okay, now, now that we know that, we know that this one here is going to be an S. So that's the only one missing from there. Okay, now we need to find one of these and then we can finish off this corner. Let's go for A and T. So A here and T. So the top line first, T acting on A. So one, two and three is our start points. So pick A first. One goes to two, and then on T, two goes to two. Two goes to three, three goes to one, and then the one left here is three. <clears throat> so two, one, three will give us S. So T and A will give us S. So that's an S. So therefore we have to put an R in here. So if you've got T, S here, that means this has to be R. And SR here means this one here has to be T. OK, now let's have a look at this one here. What about R and A? So A acting on R. One, two, three. Start points. Now let's see here if this one equals this one. Because this one here is obviously the reverse of that one. Let's see if they're the same. So acting on R first, one goes to one. And then with A, one goes to two. Two goes to three. And then with A, three goes to one. Then the only one missing is a three. So two, one, three gives us the group S. So we can see here that A dot R does not equal R dot A. So this is not commutative in the multiplication. So let's put this in, in our diagram now. R and A, that will give us S. So if you know that, then we know that this one here is going to give us T. So that saves us doing that calculation. You can check that for yourselves. Now let's pick any one of these and then we can finish off this corner. So S composed with A. Let's try that. So A composite S with our starting points. Group of S first. One goes to two and then two goes to three. And then in here, two goes to one. And then one goes to two. And then the only one missing is the one at the end. So three, two, one, that gives us T. So A composed with S gives us T. So now we can finish off this corner of the group. So the only one missing on this line here will be an R. Same for here. And then of course here, the only one missing on this one here is going to be an S. Okay. Now let's try this one, R composed with S. So we do the S first, composed with R, starting points one, two and three, R and S. Okay, so R first, one goes to one, and then one goes to two. Two goes to three, three goes to three. And then three goes to two, two goes to one. Of course, it could only be the one that goes in that box there. So two, three, one, this gives us group A. So this is a little bit different here. So we've done reflection with a reflection has given us a rotation basically. So S and R. So that then gives us A. Okay. So now what we want is to pick another one here. Let's pick this one here. Actually, we don't need to pick this one because we can see here, if we go down the line, the only one that can be missing from there is the B. The only one missing along this line is going to be the A. So that fills that one there. Now, what about along this line? 
the only one missing from here now is B, which then tells us the only one missing from here is A. And then if we've got the A here, the only one that could be missing here is the B. Okay, so that's the order of our group there. Now let's have a look at direct and indirect symmetries. So direct and indirect. So a direct symmetry is if we have this diagram on a piece of paper to get this rotation or the symmetry that we want, we don't have to lift it off the page. So we could just turn it without lifting it off and we end up to where we want the result to be. So that's called a direct symmetry. Whereas an indirect symmetry, if you want, for example, to get this uh, reflection, we'd have to lift the paper over and turn it round. So that would give us an indirect. <clears throat> so the property of this gives us, if we multiply a direct with a direct, so let's draw a little box here. So direct, indirect, direct, indirect. So this matches what we've got on this table here. These are the direct, these are the indirect, same on the top. If we multiply a direct by a direct, we get a group here of direct symmetries. Direct times the indirect, we end up with the indirect symmetries. And the same here, indirect multiplied by the direct, we get indirect. And the same here, indirect times the indirect, this group here is all the direct symmetries. So that always equals direct. So indirect times indirect, that will also yield a direct. I'll just write a D for short. So indirect times indirect gives us the direct. And then if we compose different ones, I can put these in either order. These will yield indirect, whichever order you want to write these down. Okay, 